Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Movie Couple Live, the show where we talk about the latest news in movies and pop culture. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And on today's show, boy, it's been a long time since we've done this intro. <laughs> and on today's show, we're talking about Sony acquiring the film rights to Tarzan. We're also going to be talking about how um, our review for Lord of the Rings, the uh, Rings of Power, Episode 6. Yes, all spoilers, including that show that he just mentioned the latest episode of Andor, and of course, She-Hulk episode seven, and a couple of other news topics that we have picked out. But first of all, guys, thanks for being here. We are back. Yay! How do we sound? We sound good. All right. I have I have that in thing in my ear, and what happens is, is every time we go live, first we get the commercial that pops up. <laughs> so I'm kind of like trying to listen and go. So I'm like, but we sound good, and we're up and running. Hey, so far... Knock on wood. Yes. No hiccups with our first one back. I mean, Navi. I guess technically Wednesday was our first one back. That's true. We were at Disneyland. We were at California Adventures and we did, we had talked right before we went live and we said, let's keep it like a short ish one, you know, <laughs> like half an hour. And I think the total time was 50 something minutes. 51 minutes. We were like, oh yeah, let's keep it short. Let's take a little walk. But for those who did join us, you guys got to see the Hulk. You guys got to see um, Ant-Man and Loki go at it. And it was actually really cool to have, to just do a, do a little uh, play with um, Ant-Man about his book and his podcast. Oh, wait, that was on live? That was on the live. And I got to admit, everyone, all those actors that are in um, Avengers Campus seem not only just so excited to be these superheroes, yeah. but to also be able to banter and play off of each other and to not have to just stand there in a line. Okay. Take the next picture. <laughs> they can actually move around and interact and engage with different characters, different actors, different people, take a few pictures and then move on. And yeah. I'm like, that is just an amazing experience when uh, you go down to Avengers campus. Apparently the thing over there, other than the Hulk and even with the Hulk, they don't really want too much of a line to form anywhere they want it to be really um free flowing like i've yeah. seen um t'challa you know there's an, an avengers like jeep vehicle um and he'll hang out there and he'll start getting lines and he's like uh young ones there's no i can't i'm not gonna do the accent because i can't do it but he'll say like oh young ones there are no lines and he will sometimes eventually step off the vehicle and he will move so that it's not because avengers campus it's large, but at the same time, it isn't. Oh, Does that make sense? Actually, I'd have to disagree with that first part of the statement. Avengers Campus is actually really small. Oh. It is. <laughs> I think compared to many of the other lands at Disney, I mean, compared to Cars Land, compared to Pacific Wharf, all, I mean, that area, um, Avengers Campus is pretty teeny tiny. And then when they add in the new um, King Thanos ride, yes. which is, is that I am what so that what excited we're for. It? We're calling it, we're calling it the King Thanos ride. Or sure I guess the Multiverse it's... Avengers ride. Yeah, there's the Multiverse is tied into that. But it's a fun time. I'm glad you guys were able to. I didn't realize that that was on uh, live. So that's pretty cool that Ant-Man asked you guys to listen to his podcast or check out his book. So make sure you guys do that. I don't... Is there like a one-off? Like Who's Paul got Rudd it? Paul have... Rudd has got to have like jumped on that bandwagon and been like, you know, just for the hell of it, I'm yes. going to make one podcast. Yes. See if I can clear it with Disney and be like, hey, you know what? How about I just do one podcast as um, as Ant Man? Yeah. And just put it up on and just put it up on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> yes. Hey, we have our first super chat from Lou. Thank you Thank so you, much. Lou. Lou writes, happy Saturday, Wendy and Dustin. Stay safe. Woo! Thank, Thank you, you so much. We're yeah. trying. But the reason why we're going at three o'clock today is because, yeah, we had to run some errands. And Saturday afternoon, it's L.A., but we didn't think it was going to be <laughs> this bad of traffic. So, yeah, it took us. We were just going down from where we live to normally it would take us half hour at most one way but usually not and mm -hmm. it took us like over an hour to get there and back just to pick up packages because we don't have our mail um packages pr and things like that we don't have a scent here yeah um just because it's less secure you know about porch, porch pirates. pirates i'm sure yeah. porch pirates are everywhere know? even i'm sure they're in all different countries people are like hey look a package Yoink. yes so yeah, we try not to have a lot of our stuff sent here. So we had yes. it, we have it sent to a mailbox. Yes, absolutely. Freeman Forever is here. I think maybe hey. first time chatter writes. Hey guys, love y'all's reaction so much. Much love from Austin. Woo, thank you, you so know, much. Austin, Texas. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
Uh, we almost for Blackpink's concert, we we were almost going to get tickets, not to Austin because I think they were playing in Dallas, but. We were trying, but we weren't able to get those VIP tickets, and we really want those VIP tickets for Blackpink, so we have to make the extra long trip to go to Atlanta. So anybody who is watching from Atlanta, Georgia, if there's good food and good cool things to check out in Atlanta, we're going to be there for like three days. Maybe less, depending. We're going to uh, fly in, fly sleep, in, go to the concert, sleep, get out. go home. Yeah, So, uh, but if you have suggestions, let us know in the comments below. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Before we get into the topics, Marvin Martin's back. Marvin! With, uh, oh, listen, I want to see his, his new recommendation. Oh, that looks like a D&D &D dragon. I can't tell Unless it's a, like, it's so small, I can't tell. I don't Dude, have my glasses Tell me on. what the picture is. It looks, yeah, it looks kind of like a dragon, a gull, like an orange dragon with like blue wings. Is That's a not, cool looking is dragon. Is it not a Mar Marvin the Martian anymore? No, it's not. But I still think it's cool. Uh, who writes? Uh, Jeff Castellucci's Ghostwriter and voice plays in the halls of the Goblin King. Ooh, I feel like Ooh. I watched that one not that long ago. The voice play one. Uh, Boo, Unicorn for University. Yay! If you could be your own vampire type, what would you be? Oh, well, I guess there are very many different vampire types. I want to be the one that sunlight has less of an effect on me. Yeah. Almost like a daywalker. Yeah, Blade. There we go. That's who I want to be. I want to be Blade. I want to be Blade. I want to be Blade. To where you don't have to worry. You have all of their strengths, none of their weaknesses. Um, you still I don't want to sparkle in the sunlight. Don't want to sparkle in the that's sunlight. That's drawing attention, unnecessary attention. I mean, I love glitter, but mm -hmm. that, that's unnecessary attention to myself if I'm already a daywalker. Yeah, yeah, blend yeah. In. I guess I could always tell people, like, you know, I just really like glitter and I want it on my skin always and forever. Yeah. And, you know, and some one of the things that we are going to talk about a little bit later today. Yes. Um, well, actually, is that on the schedule we're going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Armor Wars. Yes. Armor Wars, because at the very top of the chat, right before I chatted, um, Green, Fiend Green Fiend put in there. Uh, now that Armor Wars has become a movie, could that maybe mean Blade will be a series on Disney Plus? Ooh, to interesting. To not shift back um, the slate of the multiverse saga any further, even Deadpool 3's mm -hmm. date. Oh, because yeah, I definitely don't want Deadpool 3's date to get pushed back any further. I want to see that now. I want it. Even here I want and it now. now. I want my Deadpool now. <laughs> I want my Hugh Jackman Wolverine now. Don't we all? Don't we all? So, but now that it's honestly, I'm a little torn because I would have loved to have seen Armor Wars as a series because then you could really dive more into all of this Stark technology that is getting out, mm. all of the different countries that are now having their own Iron Man suit to where now Iron Man is kind of obsolete because everybody has a version of the Iron Man armor. Hence armor wars? And if I'm not mistaken, there... Navi, did you eat something off the carpet? Probably. She's like, yes, but you don't know what it is. Uh... Um, but also, I, if I'm not mistaken, one of the big events that kicks off Armor Wars is this um, small group of terrorists that all have the um, like an arc reactor, mm. but they deliberately overcharge or... Um, overcharge them mm. so they're like a nuclear a small nuclear explosion without the nuclear fallback sounds terrible and they just rush into this one area and they just trigger them and go Boosh! and everyone's like okay we need to do something about this stark technology that's getting out is in the that world. already like in a comic book yes oh wow because i remember seeing somewhere in i, I can't remember which which comic book it was mm. but i remember that moment and that actually might have started off Civil War. Mm -hmm. But but anyways, I would love to see something like that to where people are just starting to get their hands on and misusing this technology. And it just adds such a compelling story on and on how can we what can we do to prevent this kind of technology from getting out and what kind of restrictions need to be done. And there's a lot of modern day stories that you can connect to. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in seeing, I was really interested in seeing it as a series, but now that it's a movie, yeah, I'm a little curious on what they're going to focus on because instead of six hours, you now get two hours yeah. of storytelling. Yeah. I, uh, I guess we can go, go into this topic here since we sort of segued into it. Um, so 
yeah, this was originally going to be a Disney Plus series, which I was fine with. And at D23, they said that it was from Secret Wars that was going to go right into Armor Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion, Sorry. yeah, true. Secret Invasion into Armor Wars. So I don't feel like that's going to be possible anymore because now they have to turn it into a movie and it's bigger budget and, you know... Um, production schedule because they marvel doesn't have just like they don't shoot like one project at a time there's several things going on for example when they were filming i think tom holland spider-man dr strange was also filming because there were i think like tiktoks or whatever of uh of um him saying like he would like hop over and like and visit was, america chavez like on the like, what are you guys doing she's like well I'm nothing here what are you guys doing oh well, i you can't know? tell you so like it it's just i kind of i was kind of excited to hear that secret invasions we were going to get that and it was going to lead into mm -hmm. but the, what are the dates next to each other i can't remember um maybe not i'd have to look up on the i don't i haven't had memorized the yeah. slate for um phase five mm -hmm. yeah but i mean honestly it's makes sense that they would start going hey this is a really good story mm -hmm. we really want to make this a big budget film mm. and so they're just swift shifting things around but then that does leave an opening for in their movies i mean in their um tv show slate and blade would make a really good one honestly honestly i think it would be really good because then you can delve more into the lore of the rebooted blade you know, you could tell a little bit more of his backstory. You can spend some more time with some of the other characters and some of the main villains while you're introducing this character. Mm -hmm. However, I I did also really want a Blade movie, and that's what I was expecting. Yeah, I agree with you that if they did a series for Blade, yes, we would get to have more time with the character because it's episodic. But I was really, when they announced it, my head automatically went, well, this is going to be a film and it's going to yeah. look so cool on the big screen. They've got Mahershala Ali playing Blade. This is going to be amazing. And 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 no one is out there saying Blade is going to be a Disney Plus series. No one's saying that. Kevin Feige is not saying that. Disney's not saying that. Not yet. We as fans are just speculating that because they, you know, is now um, having Armor Wars be a film that leaves some sort of like an empty you know slot for an, a project but i'm still hoping that blade will remain a theatrical release and something else there's so many superheroes inside the marvel universe i know we're still just scratching the surface right. and you know and that's one thing that i really do love about shows like she hulk mm. is that we're getting some they're throwing some of these little hey hey you remember this random villain that we have here you go here's another really like like what is it like we haven't seen him yet but frogman yeah we haven't seen him yet we haven't seen frog we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit later i don't want to jump all over the place with our topics mm -hmm. i want to for my sanity i want to try to keep it uh streamlined so with that said, uh, let us know you guys' thoughts on Armor Wars. It's Armor War, or Armor Wars. My Armor goodness, War. who is moving around so much outside? Our security camera keeps going off. And we're like, no, leave us alone. Is it the jump rope lady? No, it's probably off. It's probably our neighbor. So, and there's nothing even. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm, I'm about to be like, sir, are you okay? I'm not even picking up anything. What is happening? Oh yeah, it's our neighbor. So I'm but, gonna mute it. Okay, that's probably a good idea. But some of the other topics that we are diving into today, and something that I was really surprised to see when Wendy sent me this topic was yeah. the Sony acquiring um the Tarzan, rights to the Tarzan. rights to Tarzan, and they're going, it's gonna be a reimagining of the tale. I'm like, how can you reimagine the tale that is that is Tarzan, yeah. A part of me is and kind of like... still call it Tarzan. At this point, then, wouldn't you just call it something else? Well, and also, we've seen this story done a hundred times. And I don't really know anyone out there that's calling for, where's our new Tarzan movie? Yeah. Maybe like 20 years, 15 years ago, people were like, oh, Tarzan. But now I'm kind of like, I think it's really... Oh, that it's story's told. Done. Yeah. It's kind of like King Arthur... King Arthur, you know? Robin Hood, uh, sorry to say it, but Peter Pan. 
There's so, I mean, honestly. Well, get ready. Another I mean, one is coming. I know another <laughs> one is coming. Peter Pan and Wendy. And a part of me is kind of like, from what I've seen in trailers for Peter Pan and Wendy, I'm like, okay, okay. But I'm just so tentative about it because I'm like, the last one was really bad. Yeah. So reportedly for Tarzan, Sony is aiming for a total reinvention of the character with the goals of reintroducing him to a new modern audience. Tarzan isn't meant to be modern, though. No, Tarzan is supposed to be. And like, even if you're born, even if you're like, you know, just coming out of high school, say, you would still know the story of Tarzan. I feel like that's that that's not a story that you just wouldn't know anything about, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know what I've kind of been out of the school yeah, circuit for quite a while. Um, so I don't really know if Tarzan is a big project i mean it's a big story that they still kind of tell but yeah. you know there is a disney movie about it so i guess that could still get kids to go oh yeah tarzan so but mm -hmm. honestly but listen scroll down a little bit okay. it's something that just piqued my interest ruru 2 yes this tarzan versus predator we can do kind of like a uh prey version oh, of it gosh. but it's tarzan and maybe that's predator what we'll get swing through the vines <laughs> And Tarzan's like, I can do that better, and catches up with him and like tackles him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't feel like it's super <laughs> necessary. So I, we'll see what they decide to do with it if they do anything with it. Um, they acquired the film rights, so I imagine that they will do something with that. I'm surprised that you still need to acquire the film rights to Tarzan because I would think by now public that domain. that is in public domain. That story is old. Who knows? So, I mean, it's kind of like, do I have to get the film rights to Romeo and Juliet? You know, you don't have to because it is, that is definitely public domain. Yes. Um, but uh, well, what do you guys think? What do you think of the idea of getting a new uh, Tarzan series completely reimagined and completely new? I'm just, honestly, I'm, I'm a little confused by this decision by Sony to go like, yeah, Tarzan, let's put money in that. Um, they want to reintroduce the character to the modern audience, so we'll see what they what they do with that. Uh, next up on our topic of movie news, there is going to be a new take on Nosferatu, and this is going to be by one Robert Eggers uh, with our. I, I guess he I guess he's working with the other Skarsgård because the Northman was with Alexander Skarsgård, and mm -hmm. now for this one we get Bill Skarsgård as the title character. Uh, Lily Rose Depp is also going to co-star in the film. So he is, Robert Eggers is directing, he's writing the script. Uh, and so I don't know how many of you guys saw The Northman. I feel like this is right up the alley for Robert Eggers. It's giving Lighthouse, The Northman, the, like The Witch, like but Nosferatu. You know, now that you really mention it and you kind of like reminded me of all tale. of the different movies that he, that, um, Eggers has done. It's like, oh yeah, Nosferatu, that's right up his alley, right up there with like the witch. So it and you can make Nosferatu very just you know, messes with your mind, what the heck's going Which on? Which his film does a lot of where you're watching, you're like, what is happening right now? But like stunning visuals. Very poetic mm -hmm. uh dialogue. And I wonder if Willem Dafoe is in this one as well. <laughs> and what role Somewhere he is going to play. There. Yeah. Uh and Taylor Joy is not a part of this. She has a lot of uh she's a working girl, so um they weren't able to clear her schedule for this one because we know he loves working with her. I think this is the first time he's going to be working with uh, Lily uh Rose yes Lily Rose Depp um so I'm curious but I feel like she would be the right fit as well I don't honestly know just like speaking from just like you know the characters that, that I feel like she could have fun in I feel like this project she seems like to be the right fit for uh she's got a show coming out uh, on HBO Max I think next month or in a couple of weeks this month I think in two weeks called The Idol uh and honestly the first time the the reason why i even heard about the idol is because jenny kim of black pink has a role in it so i was like oh i gotta watch it for her but i'll watch it for everybody else's it's from the creative mind of uh sam levinson and the weekend so i think uh we'll see the trailers mm -hmm. looks pretty intense uh what do you think of nosferatu anything else to add well 
I'm sorry to do, I am sorry to say that I'm not really a big fan of Eggers movies. Um, mm. They're just not for me. If you like them, that's awesome. I know some people who loved the Lighthouse, who loved the Northmen, and love that kind of poetic Shakespearean kind of vibe to the dialogue. Um, for me, it just doesn't hit home. So I'm kind of like, uh, this isn't really a movie that I think would appeal to me, but it does seem like an interesting choice. Um, it does really do feel like it will fit into Edgar's wheelhouse. And that horror stuff. And that horror and that artsy, and you could really go very artistic with Nosferatu. Yes. So I would be curious just to see what other people think of it. Yeah. And then be like, if people are like, yeah, it's awesome. Then be like, okay, I'll get myself down. But one thing that I did see in the chat that I thought was hilarious, Ruru 2 has a theory on who William Defoe will be. And that's probably a priest. Ooh. I think that would fit. Oh yeah. Just have him be a random priest. Okay, he goes yeah. in there, tries to exercise the um, uh, Nosferatu and then he gets his throat slit. And then that's it. That's all you get. That's How all you sad. get. Right? How sad for him, Defoe. Just in there enough to be like, yeah, William Defoe's in my movie. Well, we get, we got a couple of years, I'm sure, before it, uh, we see that film yeah. in theater. So we'll we'll try to remember Dustin's uh, prediction and see if it no, comes Ru through. No, Ruru Ruru prediction to see if it comes through. I cannot take comes I cannot take credit true. for that theory. Uh, we have another super chat from Marvin Martin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marvin. Marvin writes, "How to do justice to original and actually scary?" I think that's where. Edgar's kind of specialty is, is he takes the root of that story, right? We'll take, uh, well, I guess, well, yeah, the Northman, I think, was was kind of an original tale. It was very Not an original. It was, it was, it was a, based off of the story that Hamlet was based off. Oh, okay. So it oh, is, right, right, right. The yes. story of the Northman mm. is really old because, yeah, what was it? Um, Lion King took it from Hamlet and mm. Hamlet took it from the Northman mythology. Yes. Um, so I feel like, I just feel like he's got a unique way of telling these stories. He's got uh, a very clear vision of what he wants his movies to be. And I feel like if you, it's very stylized. And I feel like if you walk into Robert Eggers films, you know what you're setting yourself up for. Now, if it's yeah. your first time watching like a Robert Eggers film, you're kind of like, what's going on? You know, then take that with, with, with what you will. Um, what was I going to say? But yes, uh, I feel like how you know, he is somebody who can do justice to the original and make it yeah. creepy, scary, something like that. Well, and that's also kind of what the original story for like the Northman was. It was a very you know presentational story of revenge from the Vikings. Mm -hmm. um, from so it would make sense that it does kind of fit the way that Eggert likes to tell his. Mm -hmm. um, to like to to do his dialogue and tell his movies. Yes. Yeah. Rude who says Viking revenge tale. Hey, before we move on with our topics, I just want to quickly remind you guys, if you enjoy our topics, what we're talking about, the live stream, chatting with us, uh, in real, in real all of our geeky time, talk. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and at the very least smash that thumbs up button. The YouTube algorithm has been awful lately. And uh, when we got COVID, obviously we weren't doing any sort of anything because it was just, we felt terrible. Um, so we were just resting. And, and then Wendy's just that cough. I mean, we couldn't, you couldn't talk hardly at all without breaking into a cough. Yeah. That's why for episodes of Andor, like one through four, you're not, you guys who are uh, patron supporters, you're not going to get a full watch along of those because I can't make it through the episode without coughing. It sounded like I started editing and I was like, this is awful. Uh, I think somebody caught it too. I don't know if it was Black Loki or somebody else that was like, hey, are you okay during this? It looks like you're struggling. I was like, oh yeah, I definitely. The struggle is real. There were tears. I was red in the face. I was coughing a lot. So we just want to say that. And also um, we want to say that you probably on YouTube, um, we'll start seeing a lot more like YouTube shorts from us because apparently that's what YouTube is trying to push now. Shorts, everybody's trying to be like TikTok. <laughs> they don't want to be their uh, own platform TikTok that they're Instagram successful on. Or... Yeah, so uh, Dustin's been uploading uh, some shorts here and there. I'll be uploading some shorts here and there. So just look out for those. We resisted for doing it for so long because it ruins the aesthetic of what the page looks like. And I hate that. Yeah, I really that... wish that we could separate them into a well, different like... Not even that. I don't need a separate shirt. Sure, yeah, that would be the ideal. But like if I could customize my thumbnail and make it all, you know, landscape, it would be fine. 
but there is no way. So you just have the portrait and then you have all these, you know, just empty negative space on the side that just looks aesthetically unpleasing. Yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, I could, I could bash the whole shorts more, <laughs> but I'm not going to because we're talking on YouTube and why do they ding us more for it? So anyways, uh, and the one last thing, thank you so much to Stardew. Stardew sent over uh, a huge oh, care package so of snacks and goodies. A lot of it is Those gone because a lot of them dressed, came to D23. The all, the, the all dressing chips. chips was the first thing gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the and first thing I opened. I, I sent a message to him through Discord. Mm -hmm. Saying, you know, I love the cinnamon toast crunch, the caramel cinnamon toast crunch that you got. I was like, oh, I've never tried this before. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> he's been eating it every day. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've been kind of like saving some so Wendy can actually have a bowl because yeah. I don't want to be known as the one who just ate all of it. You know what always happens when we have food in the house? Dustin will do the, the, the right thing <gasps> and save stuff. me some. And then finally, he's like, she's not going to eat this. It's been weeks. So he'll finish it so it doesn't go bad. And then when literally you the next day. Hey, where is this? I wanted to try it. You should have ate it a week ago. <laughs> Without so, fail. So, but thank you, Stardew. Thank you, Stardew. That you're still saved here. our butts during D23. Yes. It has helped us sense to have food in the house. Yeah. So we really, really appreciate it. We didn't even that buy food at D23. That's no. how much, yeah, that's how much we, we utilized your care package. So thank you so much for sending that over. Uh, we talked about Armor Wars already, so we're going to go ahead and skip over to the next topic in the news flash realm. And this one, we are talking about Avatar, the last airbender, but this is the live action series not the animated because we already have that and it does not it's coming to, to netflix yes so super exciting because they've announced the full cast uh and when i saw this i, I was like oh well it's like, okay finally into it so um if you guys don't already know avatar the last airbender not to be confused with james cameron's avatar is a animated series on nickelodeon there's uh three to four seasons for the original there's three seasons the book of there's there's three books but then earth fire there, wind and water shouldn't there be four books why do i feel like there's only three seasons? why do i only feel like there's only three seasons yeah but in any case that is the original mm -hmm. and then they have a follow-up called uh the legend of Korra, and uh it's a it's a sequel much later uh Aang isn't in it even no no, no it's after his, Aang his, dies. yeah it's his his kid that's in it so we enjoy that uh very much as well so we have now the full cast which is very very exciting so for the water tribe uh amber Ander, whoa i can't speak amber mid thunder who you have seen in hulu's Ray is going to be Princess Yue. So, so she's going to be the leader of the Northern Water Tribe. I freaking, I'm so excited. That is awesome. I, I love her. She did such an amazing and I love Princess job Yue. in Prey. She, I mean, I will sing her praises to the ends of the earth because she just did a fantastic job. And she pretty much carried that whole movie on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see her as Yue. And then for our Paku is going to be A. Martinez, have, uh, oh. the party have seen in Cowboy Bebop and Ambulance. And that is going to be the waterbending master of the Northern Water Tribe and a defender of their traditions. And then we have Irene Bedard uh, from Pocahontas in the Stand as a uh, Yagoda. I don't remember Yagoda in Yagoda the animated the series. Top of my, uh, She's Yagoda. a healer served as a role model. Oh, okay. It's the one woman that taught Katara how to do like healing. But not bloodbending. No. Okay. Not bloodbending. Yes, bloodbending is a thing, guys. <laughs> uh, and then we have Joel Olet. I hope, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, probably am. Trickster and Ruby the Well are some of the project as Han, uh, a strong and skilled warrior with unwavering loyalty to his tribe because every tribe needs that person, I feel like. Uh, and then we have Nathaniel Ar Arcand uh, from FBI Most Wanted as Chief Arnuk, who is uh, Princess Yoe's father and the leader of the northern water tribe and then we have uh miguen fairbrother i'm saying that wrong from mohawk girls as avatar kuruk 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 yes and yeah a previous avatar but honestly what i'm loving is who they're casting in these and it is to the right ethnicity yes. you know they're actually, yes you know we're not getting like an entire water you know what is that called um what they did in the movie no. I'm actually very happy on the casting choices 
and I'm excited. I, I'm, a, I'm getting more and more. I'm getting more and more excited. Yeah. To see this live action series. Yes. Uh, so to kind of fast track a little bit, Arden Cho is a part of the Fire Nation. It looks like she's playing a character named june june i also don't really remember uh I remember she's, judy. she is yeah oh i want to be judy so bad dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so she is a bounty hunter known for her ruthless efficiency oh yeah that's right she has like that um giant dog that she rides and it has like she's like a, a super a super smelling dog it has like oh that, it looks like it has like um a gopher um nose oh. kind of, Interesting. Okay, okay. I love Arden Cho. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting her at the HCA Awards, speaking to her. Uh, and she is super nice. She's got a uh, series right now on Netflix called The Partner Track, if you want to check that out. And then just moving forward, we have the mechanist from the Earth Kingdom, uh, Danny Pudi, mm -hmm. uh, is going to play that character. That makes sense. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Udkar, oh, right. Mbu, um, sorry. King Boomy is his character. This is yeah, I, I am King I love King Boomy. Uh so looking forward to that. So sorry for butchering the actor's name. Like I, I know I totally did it. But this is the uh the ruler of the Earth Kingdom. Um of Basing. No, no, not Basing. Not Basing. Of yes. Oma, Omashu, something Omashu. like that. Uh let's see who else scrolling When they get Instagram. when the av team avatar gets there, it's my cabbages. Yes. And we have a cast for uh, Tai Lee, who is a part of the Fire Nation. And uh, Mamona Tamada is playing this Claudia, Claudia Ishikishi oh. from Babysitter's Club. So I'm super excited because I freaking love her. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have uh, Talia Tran, who is playing May. May is oh such my gosh, that's a, a cool character. I, I feel like a part of me feels like May because she's just so like <laughs> she's just so yeah deadpan, deadpan uh but then she's got this thing with with um, Zuko. Zuko that I'm just like oh I want to see more of this it's like, a little bit I love that it's the two emo <laughs> kids that get together <laughs> in the show yes uh and then we have George oh Takei gosh, I love this casting yes George Takei is in how do you pronounce Ko 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 Ko, Ko? Um, K O H. K-O-H. It's the face stealer. Yes, the 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 spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's super exciting. Uh, and then who else do we have? There's there's tons of other. There's tons of other yeah. ones. Yeah. Oh, James C is going to be the cabbage merchant. I love that they actually cast this role. Uh, he's the guy that screams, "My cabbages!" Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm very excited that they have this cast. Like, honestly, iconic in all. The On episodes. there, does it say who's going to be playing? Um, combustion man because sparky sparky boom guy the sparky sparky boom guy i don't think it's on here let's see fire nation uh we have ty lee we have may we have lieutenant g because fire lord zozin is going to be a uh, hero Ka Ka hero kanagawa uh and then yeah avatar roku the great sage i don't think sparky sparky boom guy is in it okay Sparky, At least Sparky not be announced. Guy. Interesting, um, they're not announcing Mr. Toph? 47 mm. in the chat said that Drake will play Combustion Man. What? <laughs> Which would be interesting. <laughs> That's so, very interesting. Uh I I they don't have a Toph. I know. Cast? I'm a little Do you know, they, they might have... well because Toph doesn't well, come she's... in until book two. She's also blind. And I feel like they like they have to think about the way they want her. Yeah, they, I don't think they should take that away from the character. That makes tough, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having you know, um, so yeah, they, I'm wondering if they're going to cast someone blind for that. They role. can. They could. Mm -hmm. They could. We have deaf actors, you know, and like the movie Coda. Like we've seen it. It's obviously doable. So I think though. For the fight scenes, for a lot of the acting scenes, I think casting a blind actor would be difficult. And plus, Toph isn't really blind because she can still kind of. She's like Daredevil. She's like yeah, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. She's like Charlie Cox. Yeah. So yeah, just really, and and she is a bit young too, if you think about it. Um, yeah. She's she's a bit young. They're so probably going to make her a little bit older in the series to make it easier. To make it easier. So, but we won't find out <laughs> until Toph makes her appearance in season two because this is oh, that's right. She's not even, yeah. I don't even think she's going to be in season one. Yeah. So, but there you have it. That is the cast of Avatar The Last Bender, the live action series coming to Netflix. Super excited about it. 
I can't wait. I hope it's good. I, I, I worry like the cast sounds great, but I worry a little bit because we've been burned before by the live action avatar, the last airbender. Oh yeah. So, I mean, it really makes, it just kind of puts that bad taste in your mouth. <clears throat> and you just remember going, Oh, I remember being so excited for this movie and it was so bad. And it wasn't like, it wasn't even like, <clears throat> Oh, you tried bad. It was, what were you thinking? What's bad? going on with Why you? it was insultively bad. Yeah. When you change the pronunciation of characters that people love when they you even say said during Avatar it, weird. Avatar. They said Avatar. Like, except for one character. Except for one character. Iroh. Uh, no, no, no. I thought it was the grandmother. Oh, yeah. She was, was like, like no, that's not how you say she's it. Like, it's Avatar. I'm not going to say that. Fire me then. Yeah. And, and she, yeah, she was a, you know, was like, I already had a career. I'm good. You know, go ahead and try to fire me. <laughs> Yeah. Mr. Six Sense. Yes. So uh, Mr. Yasman 300 says, let's not forget the original creators left after clashing with Netflix. True. Yeah, which also all makes, that me, into consideration. Which makes me a little nervous. But we will have to wait. This I want it to been, be good. I want, I want it to be good. Shadow and Bones is really, really good. And I feel like that that's a pretty solid adaptation. So like, please <laughs> do it kind of like that. Mm -hmm. That would be great. I have to cough. Okay. I'm going to turn off the mic. This is why we weren't doing live shows. <clears throat> I made it through 36 minutes without coughing. Do you need some water? I'm okay. I got my... Uh, we've also got some liquid IV, which uh, if you guys want, yes. we have a promotion code for our liquid IV. Yeah, just the movie couple. You have to get it. It's only redeemable on the liquid IV website. It is... Um, unfortunately it dropped a little bit uh we're always transparent with you guys so we got the email a little while back uh, you still get free shipping with it they didn't say anything about that but it used to be 25 percent off now it's 15 percent off but we haven't purchased uh in a while so you guys let us know if it's still 25 maybe it is that would be nice yes so actually we can probably check after the show all right so oh cassie banks i'm actually drinking some of that right now hey Dude, liquid iv helped so much during d23 too oh and during gosh. covid during covid it actually helped like drinking water, just you know how everything tastes off and different when you're sick. Um, I still don't really have my sense of smell completely back. I would say maybe like 20% it's back and it's been almost a month and a half. Yeah. And you still don't have your sense of smell back. <clears throat> I just said that. Oh, I thought you said taste. <laughs> smell. Maybe I said taste. I yeah. don't know. But uh, with drinking and people were like, oh, you know, during COVID recovery, sleep a lot, rest a lot drink a lot of water even if you when you think you're not thirsty just like drinking water just didn't didn't taste right to me i don't know it, but li the liquid iv helped me and if and i felt more hydrated so go ahead and get some use the movie the code it's just the movie couple and you get discount plus free shipping should we move on with yes. our next topic because now we're going to start diving into mm -hmm. spoilers right all spoilers for the next three topics so if you haven't watched the latest episode of the Rings of Power, Andor, or She-Hulk. We are going to be fully diving into spoilers here. So um, if you have to depart here, we totally understand, which is why we leave it towards the end of the show. Yeah, because we want to be able to talk as much as we can with you guys. But when we start talking spoilers, it makes sense that we might have to lose <laughs> some of you. Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and kick it off with The Rings of Power, the show that that was receiving a lot of hate even before it went uh, yeah, out. Yeah, I um, have to admit, before Evenings of Power even <clears> started. <throat> and it also makes sense, you know, because Tolkien is not just beloved. He It is legendarily beloved because mm -hmm. it it is what has inspired so much fantasy, so many novels. So everyone says... Pretty much any kind of modern day fantasy mm -hmm. has some kind of um, pull from Tolkien. So, something that they were like, you know what? I want it to be like this from Tolkien. I want to have mm -hmm. this kind of vibe or I want to have this kind of story. So it makes sense that people would be very, very defensive about anything that comes out that is going to change it. And I have to admit, so far, so far I am liking the rings of power. The first six episodes, the first three episodes, I think was very much set up, but it makes sense because they have to cover 
thousands of years of time period that they Ooh. want to cover. Oh, did you find something cool? Uh, no, but, I was just reading the comments, not to interrupt you. Debbie uh, said, hey, you're not going to talk about the return of the Planet of the Apes. And I, was, I didn't, wasn't even aware that um, there is some news from two days ago. Uh, Justin Kroll from Deadline talked about this. It says the new Planet of the Ape movie taps The Witcher's Freya Allen to star mm -hmm. and sets a uh, uh, <clears throat> new title. And there's a first look. So this is the next installment for the 20th uh, Century Studio movie. Uh, and Freya Allen is set to star in the name of the new Planet of the Apes film. It's called Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And da, 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 there's a poster of what that looks like. Oh, well, yeah. you know, the three, the saga of the pre-Planet of the Apes mm -hmm. storyline, I thought did really well. I really liked it. The first it. one was really good. The yes. second one was amazing. The third one was okay, mm -hmm. but it still worked. I still liked how they told the story. So now it would make sense to be kind of like, well, what would happen if we now kind of told the original stories again? So I'm game, you know, yeah. with the way that they were going before, they're, they have a good path already tr uh, blazed and ready to go check out and to remake this story. And also, it's the right age. It's the right. The, it has kind of all of the qualifications that you need to tell to retell a, mm -hmm. a movie or to retell a story, redo a story, or redo a movie. You know, you can have better special effects. You can update the story, and you can also change the story a little bit to kind of you know fit what society has become. Right. So. I think I'm excited to hear that. I can't wait yeah. to see what they do. I wonder like if what Andy Circus is it. going to be involved in it at all. Ooh, I know not, not, not as a an actor, Caesar, yeah. <laughs> not a Caesar because this is going to take place in <clears throat> much in the future. I could see him on as an executive producer or something Exit, like yeah. that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because he, he can also play a different character because you're going to be yeah. If you're master going, mocap, actor. if you're going to be doing mocap, you want you want <clears throat> him there. Because, yeah, he's the master of it. <clears throat> he's kind of like the godfather of mocap. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, here's the hoping. Yeah, there you go. There's a little bit of a uh, tidbit of that for you. Back to the Rings of Power. So episode six. Uh, this one was very centered on the villagers defending their home against the orcs. And we were watching this and going, how? They're orcs versus humans who mostly are untrained mm -hmm. uh, at, at battle. They have one elf. One elf. And that's it. That one elf has helped a lot. Yes. Um, so this, it's funny. Th there's a lot of shots that reminded me, and I don't know if it's on purpose or what, but um, as the orcs were, you know, marching up to the gates of the keep, it was, it was giving a lot of um, uh, uh, helps. Deep. Helms Deep, yeah. I, I think that's the vibe that they were going for with that shot of all of the orcs just marching up there. And um, and I was sitting here going, what is the strategy? What is the plan? I kind of liked how they set it up. Yes. And I love the visuals. I love the set design. I love just what um, it's – what the way that they make it – you can tell – exactly where they spent their budget and it was on the visuals on the set design on the graphics on the special effects yes uh and even when the uh the soldiers the writers i guess you can call them of numenor when they wrote in it gave a little writers of rohan mm -hmm. you know not not as dramatic and epic there was no gandalf bringing in the light yeah no, nothing like that but it was still i was like help is on the way i think what was cool what i wasn't expecting was when they eventually took back the village um, and they, you know, had like filled up the tunnels and boarded up everything. And when the orcs came marching back in, and I was like, wow, they were like actually pretty successful. Like, I guess, you know, when you really want to defend your home badly, you can succeed. And they had a strategy and everybody, you know, worked together. And then the twist was that a lot of them were not orcs. It was their own fellow villagers. And there's also a part, even throughout this entire fight, I'm sitting here going, Wait a second. They can't win. I know they can't win because we know that this entire land becomes Mordor. Yeah. We know that this is this the, all these villagers are going to lose, but yet they had these moments of, oh, they 
won. How? How did? Oh, okay. They didn't really win. And that was kind of sad because I was thinking for the people, for the villagers that, that, you know, sided with the orcs and fought. I feel like at some point you got to have some sort of internal struggle. That's like, if I switch sides back to my side, my villagers, my home team right now, the orcs wouldn't know we could overtake them. Yeah. But there was a whole another bigger part you know, uh, plan because the whole point was also for him to get the hilt of the sword back. They were looking for that. Theo, his mother was endangered. They were threatening to kill her. And he was like, I have it. And unfortunately, the one thing that I was hoping, I was like, oh, maybe he wouldn't get it. Be, you know, picked up some other way. Unfortunately, ended back to the person who was looking for it. And that is how Mount Doom yeah was born and it was pretty epic to see i was not expecting that i actually liked that what that's actually what they were trying to do was Mm -hmm. to bring back mount doom i mean not bring back but to introduce um, it introduce how they introduced uh, mount doom and i'm like oh the only thing is that i'm kind of like wait a second water doesn't normally go up on the mountain normally it goes down so the physics of that doesn't quite work Mm -hmm. But I still like the idea of making the volcano erupt yeah. so that it because even in the Fellowship of the Ring, the very air you mm-hmm. breathe is a poisonous gas that chokes your lungs. And I'm like, oh, and Galadriel well. was all up in that. She I know. Just, I'm kind of like, I was like, yes, Galadriel we know you're an elf, but come on. Did, did she just die? <laughs> I know she doesn't die. Uh, but it really yeah. does look like, yeah, if, if you get caught in that pyroclastic cloud, I think that's how you pronounce it. You're dead. That's what, what that's what happened to Pompeii and all those people that turned to turned to stone in a sense is they got caught in that cloud. Yeah. So yeah, technically you'd have a um a statue there. Yeah. So yesterday we were checking how many episodes total there was going to be for the Rings of Power because we've been watching it and it's one the one show we that we're deciding to not react to because. I, we just can't react to everything and film everything because sometimes we're still so far behind. We're things. super like I need to do Stranger Things. We need to do Cobra Kai season five. Having watched a, a single minute of that, um, so we need to catch up. And on top of that, we have Andor, She Hulk, and everything else we're trying to do. So, and it's also nice to have some TV shows that we can just like be on the couch with Navi and have dinner, and we're watching it, you know, and and not thinking about. Like, I got to post-production this later. So uh, that will probably be the same moving forward with Rings of Power, but we'll talk about it on here. But Dustin looked it up yesterday. The season finale is coming already. Yeah, I think we've only got two more episodes. Yeah, I think there's only eight episodes, maybe nine. But no. there's going to be five seasons, he said, right? They okay, They want to do five seasons. Oh, they want to say, okay. Um, And that's the plan is for them <clears throat> to do five seasons. However... They've already planned that at the end of the last season, uh, last episode of the first season is the same day that they start filming season mm-hmm. two. So, and honestly, I'm excited. I really like to would like to see this story continue to build. Yes. I would love to see the rebirth of Sauron, see the battle that Sauron brings to Middle Earth, mm-hmm. and we've already been introduced to Isildur. 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 Mm-hmm. So we know we that were, was a surprise. Yeah, when I heard name. I was like, oh, name drop. Okay. Yeah. So we know that he grows up to be the one who cuts the the ring from Sauron's But it's hand. interesting the the arc that they're going to have for all these characters for Galadriel because the Galadriel we're seeing right now is certainly a very different Galadriel than what we see in the Peter Jackson films and um Isildur had a conversation with Galadriel in this show talking about like I just well, I was just trying to get away from Numenor as far as possible. Because yeah. that's not the Numenor that I know. So it's it's interesting there, like these characters, their motivations. Uh, and then we, in this episode, we didn't get much of the Harfoots at all, which I'm okay with because I think we were so into the battle, you know, that I think it was the right thing that they did to, to choose to stay in and focus on that. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know who yet, who the stranger is yep. at all. There's speculations, obviously. The top two choices for everybody, I think, Saruman and, uh, and Gandalf. And Gandalf. That's the, the that's the top two. But and I flip flop back and forth between the two. I'm like, I can't oh. remember the actual title, the <clears throat> name of the wizards. They're not the wizards. They're actually no. Um, they're they're celestial names that are given to them. Mm. Um, but they show up in the Third Age, which would have been when the war with Sauron starts. I think. Oh. Hmm. 
Um, but um, once again, it has been a long time since I've read the yeah, Cimmerillion. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been so, a long time. But, and I'm just excited to see just this story become more and more epic. Yes. Uh, we have a super chat from Highlander. Thank you so much. 723, who writes, thank you so much. Who writes, I know I'm outside the topic, but has anyone else noticed that the King v Viserys and Allison Hightower's kids have blonde hair, but Allison has brown hair? Uh, I don't see how the Gen X is working here. Ooh, we're not caught up. We're not caught up on that. But now we know. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, all of the kids have blonde hair, but Allison has... I think they're trying to... Uh, I haven't Al seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> she but does remember, have brown that hair. that does happen... That's kind of the whole point in the original Game of Thrones mm -hmm. is that um, all of the Baratheons were like dark hair, dark hair, dark hair, dark hair. Joffrey, blonde hair. Hmm. Oh, no. I Could wonder who the parents are of Joffrey. Could it be? We need to catch up on that, too. It's very possible. And yeah. they could be leading us down that road because they know people are going to pick up on it because that was kind of a big thing with Joffrey. Interesting. Sorry interesting so we'll see but it could also just be like just genetics right like yeah i mean it could be a recessive gene <laughs> but you know even though they don't know that back then you know there was a lot of things back in those times that they thought were true that your hair color like, is not the same outcast that you're just like no that's not right that's not the way it works yeah yeah so We'll, but we'll, we'll find see. out. <laughs> well, when we, we catch up with that series, we maybe we'll have to do series. a binge once it once it's over because we're just so busy right mm -hmm. now. But thank you so much to Highlander seven two three for your super chat and question. Great question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, certainly it's we can you know, all speculate like maybe they're not all the the offsprings aren't all from the king. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Cyber Goblin and Paul are saying Gan. Oh no, sorry. Cyber Goblin says the Istari. Is that the oh, name of the... Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I think that's what they were called. Angel Wizards. <laughs> Angel Wizards. Uh, Socrates is here and says, I disagree on who the big guy may be. I think it's Radagast. That is possible too. Um, <laughs> that is, that's actually something that I have mentioned um, in chats. Yeah. You know, saying you know, it could be Radagast mm -hmm. because he does seem more of a natural kind of, you know, they dropped him with the, um, the Hardfoots. The Hardfoots. Hardfoots. So not the hobbits, but it also would make sense on why Gandalf has such a love for the hobbits. Yeah, it makes sense because he's been around with them for a while. Yeah. So I'm excited to find yeah. out. So we will be back next Saturday uh, when we do our live stream here. Oh, actually, next Saturday. Could we? Because you have work. Um, yes, okay. I will have a break in work. We'll, con we'll condense it. So it might just be a spoiler only discussion, no news for next week because we're on a smaller time frame. Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and dive into the other show that we're excited to talk about. And that is Andor episode four, uh, talking on spoilers. So if you're not caught up, uh, you have been warned. So this show, I was looking forward to the show from its announcement because I really liked Rogue One. I really like Cassian's character. And furthermore, I like Diego Luna. So uh, for him to, you know, have a little bit more to do in within the Star Wars universe, regardless of we how we know he's going to end up, yeah. makes me really excited. I think he's a, he's a really good actor and he's fun to watch. Honestly, I'm exact opposite. When they first announced Andor, I was like, oh, <clears throat> I don't, I was, for me, I wasn't that excited about it. I was kind of like, out of all of the Star Wars properties that they were coming out on Disney Plus, I really do think like Andor was the one that I'm like, well, we we know he dies in the end, so yep. who really cares? Mm -hmm. And um, don't get me wrong, I like Diego Luna, I liked his character in Rogue One, but I wasn't like itching to see more. Mm -hmm. um, however, when I started to see some of the um, clips, some of the trailers, some of the this is what Andor is going to be like, I was like. Okay, I am really liking this dark, gritty Star Wars story. So as the series went on, as we started to see more and more, and as we started to get to watch the series, I just started to love it. Yeah, I love that they took this show out of the volume. I love that they're on location. Um, it's giving more of a movie cinematic vibe than a TV series. 
vibe uh and and i'm not 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 to say that like the volume isn't immersive because that technology is groundbreaking and it is really immersive but when you're in that environment you can smell the smells of the yeah. land and all of that stuff it makes a, a, a big difference and i think what's really cool about episode four is we're getting to see the intricate works of this story yes it's called andor a lot of it will focus on andor but also the people that he meets along his journey and that sets him on this path. Luthen being a key player in this. Yes. Uh, we love Skellen, Skellen Skarsgård. Hard to say it fast. Um, and the first time we get to see that duality of his. Yes. I, that moment where you start seeing him put on the wig, put on the rings, put on the robe, and all of a sudden he goes from this hard kind of gruff character Grumpy. to a little bit more presentational, present, presentational to, oh, welcome to my store. A little bit of a Gil, Gil, um, Gilmore. Um, Gilmore's glory is good. Oh, from Critical Role, yeah. From Critical Role from a little Vox bit. Machina. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> I loved how it switched. And when they introduced Mon Mothma in this episode, I was like, yes, to see the struggle, to see them in this hostile environment, trying to change it. And like, I'm being watched. We have to be careful, um, but I still need support. Where's the money you promised me? Where's the support you promised me? And seeing them go back and forth and, but then still come out and then give their presentation. Oh, oh your husband would love this. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, and it's just a uh, just a cover. And when he pulled out the makeup and he had a whole like secret compartment area on his sh on his ship, Which I was like, that oh, ship's cool. He is in deep like, and and an art dealer is the perfect cover. He can move things without people like looking into him too much. They're like, yep. oh, he's just an arts dealer. He's kind of wacky and, you know, he's creative and whatever. It's a perfect front it's for someone perfect. who wants to yeah. support a rebellion. Yeah. So uh, I really like that and seeing the other side of like how the inner workings of it for the people who are fighting to build the rebellion. So from Ma Ma Mothma, who was a very iconic Star Wars character, but we never really knew much of her personal life. Yeah. And in this one, we knew she's got a husband. She's knows that she has to be so careful because she's being watched all the time she's got a new driver everything it's spies are everywhere she can't move the money around and luthan's like well i gotta have the money or my people are starving like and he's not trying to cut her any slack either he's like i understand but like you you gotta understand me like we're trying to do this things are getting bad so mm -hmm. are, are you can you do it or do i need to find something else um so i i love that we got to do in, to see a little bit of that of uh, Mom Mothma. And in the next episode, I feel, you know, obviously Andor and his, his tiny team of seven uh, is, is going to go and uh, what, get the payload. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that <clears throat> what Andor instinctively did when he started to hear the plan, his goal was, it, you could tell that he was like, I'm going to try to punch holes in this. Yeah. And see what holds up. Mm -hmm. And finally he was like, Oh, that's your cover. That okay. And then when he finally figured out this could work, that's when you start seeing him get a little bit more excited. He was like, "All right, let's do this." And I'm, I'm. That makes it so excited for this heist. Mm -hmm. I want to see them pull it off. I want to see them just cause massive destruction on their way out. Get all of that money. And I'm hoping. I feel. I have a okay. I have a Mephisto theory. I have a Mephisto theory with this that real? I would love somewhere either in season one or season two where everything seems to be going right for the rebellion. They're pulling off these jobs, getting these this money, um, hijacking or sabotaging different empire things. The one that goes massively wrong is the one where they do an attack or try to do a job and Darth Vader is there and they just get destroyed. And Darth v and um, Andor gets out by the skin of his teeth. <clears throat> I would love to see a moment like that to just kind of give us all this. We've had this entire adventure. No Jedi, no Sith. It's rebellion versus the Empire. And just give us this little reminder of, oh, yeah, that's right. We have some massively evil, ma very powerful people that we are fighting against. So maybe I'm hoping. So I, I'm hoping that ha we'll have just a kind of like how we had Darth Vader a little bit in Rogue One. Yeah, 
I can see why you want that. I, on the other hand, uh, if they, if I get it, great. If I don't get it, I'm fine with it. I think this show has not needed to rely on cameos of the original characters, as in a mention of a Luke or a Leia or a Han Solo. I think aside from Mom Mothma, the other person we're going to get is Saw Gerrera. Yes. Which makes sense. <clears throat> and he wasn't in the original movies anyways. Uh, he was only... I think first we ever saw him was in Clone Wars. Yes. Right? He was yeah. in the animated series. And then we saw him in Rogue One. So, I mean, would it be cool to see Vader? Sure. But I, I this show doesn't need it. Like, it's such a cool, intense tale of just, like, people trying to survive in this world. Yeah. I know. I, 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 I agree with you that we don't need it. Yeah. But I want it. <laughs> I would love to see it. Um, I had a thought, but I forgot. So let's move on to our super chat. Okay, super chat from Anthony Solis. Thank, Thank you, you Anthony. so much. Anthony writes, what's up, Wendy and Dustin? Dustin, Wendy, sorry about that. Not My right. name's first this time. What's up, Dustin and Wendy? I am on break. Hey, got to check in. Andor is so good. I am enjoying this character build up. Yes. Also just bought my pink Venna album. Okay, <laughs> have a nice day. Yay! I saw this and I had to grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! Wendy got all of her black pink stuff. She we're getting all ready for to go on to see the um black pink in your area. The concert in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. So and it's gonna be cool. I've never been to Atlanta, Georgia. So get to check out the city for a little bit. We've been I've been once for Dragon Con, and that was years ago. Oh, uh, that's where Dragon Con is? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, congrats, uh, Anthony, for getting your own Pink Venom album. Which version, if you're still here, I wonder which version you got. Let me know uh, later in the chats or uh, in the comments. And um, thanks for checking in uh, during your break. And thank you for the super chat. Super, super sweet of you. So, um, Paul Hughes, you did actually have that. Um, Andor needs the most wanted war criminals in the galaxy the most <laughs> bloodthirsty of them <laughs> of all chopper. chopper honestly though that is something else that we could see we could see um we could see the um the crew of the ghost yeah i would i think that fits in Harris there. and doula fits right in mm -hmm. i think that would work i would love to see what other characters would oh. you guys want to see that we've seen in previous um, that we haven't seen in live action yes. that we could technically see in Andor. Well, Starju is saying it in the chat right now. I think we could see K2SO being befriended with Cassian. They which, better have that. Yeah. Actually, they better have that moment to where he, um, where Cassian gets K2SO. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing, though. Is it going to be... Alan Tudyk? Alan Tudyk. It has to be. It has to be. Why? Who, who else? But that means we haven't heard... Mm -hmm. That Alan Tudyk is in Andor, so it might be an episode. Two, I mean, not episode, oh, season, season two. two uh, yeah, we that, do that have happens. some some real estate on the timeline there. Mm -hmm. uh, so necessary may not necessarily be in in this, but we're only four episodes in, and there is twelve total. So super excited. We could maybe at the end. Um, and I think another, I guess, like original Star Wars character that we may see, or at the very least mention. Could be Bail Organa just because oh, it makes yeah. sense who is kind of also he, yeah he's kind of, supporting the rebellion yeah so it makes a lot of sense that, that we might see him sooner or later. Mm -hmm. All right, and that is our thoughts on the spoilers for Andor episode four. If you're watching this post live stream, make sure you comment your thoughts below. And then finally, let's go ahead and move on to our final topic. Final topic of she -Hulk. She -Hulk. episode seven. We got two more episodes left. This has Thunder been clap. yeah we close, did it close yeah yeah so. Now this? we will be talking about spoilers, <clears throat> so if you have not seen episode 7 of She-Hulk, you might want to return to this after you've seen it. Yes, it's on Disney+. Plus Right now you can binge all the episodes because they're super short. They're like 30 minutes. I wish they were a little bit longer, but it's fine. It, 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 it feels like a procedural sitcom situation, um, and it's very, very different than any other Marvel shows like it's does it's self-aware it doesn't take itself too seriously it's very campy it in fact has a very self-containing just as one-off wedding episode that i very much enjoy because it spoke to me like i've been to weddings no i've been a bride so the whole bridesmaid i was kind of like i can see it all the, the the tropes i can i can see it all coming and i thought it was funny um so in this one dustin and i have been enjoying a lot of the episodes 
uh, they're not all perfect. Some we like more than others. Yeah. I would and you always have find to little say... things that I'm kind of like, uh, I didn't quite like this. I didn't quite like that. Yes. But overall, I've been, we've been enjoying them. Yeah. And Tatiana Maslany is fantastic uh, as Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk. So it's been great seeing her perform. And uh, Titania cracks me up, man. <laughs> She's just... <laughs> Jamila Jamil said it. She's like, she's such an annoying villain. I was like, what does that mean? I and get when it. You watch the show, you understand. Yeah, I get I get it now. I get it now. But I will say for this latest episode, episode is it seven? Yeah, it's yeah, episode, episode seven. seven. We've only got two more. Wait. No, because there's nine episodes. Mm -hmm. um, this one is titled The Retreat because we get another cameo from Emil Blonsky um, at his what is it called? Star Twilight something. His oh retreat. yeah, and his yeah his retreat <clears throat> bought 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 for him by his seven, seven soulmates. Seven soulmates. Um, <clears throat> I will say this is probably my least favorite episode. I like where they got to at the end because it's all revolving around like Jennifer's blood. They kind of tease that, and and when she first got her Hulk power, you know, and and they made it very Bruce made it very clear, like we're gonna destroy the blood. It's important this is that too nobody dangerous. So, and then we had the, you know, the the people who jumped her outside of her apartment trying to get her blood. Obviously, she was the Hulk, so the needle wasn't penetrating her skin. And then we saw at the end of episode six that somebody out there have created like the giant needle with potentially maybe with vibranium. We don't know. It's not been said, but we we're speculating. Another Mephisto theory. Hmm. And so this episode kind of sets up like a little soul searching episode for Jen. Yeah. She meets this nice guy named Josh who was all about Jen, doesn't care that she is She-Hulk. And I was like, oh my gosh, could it be? It was too good to be true. Man, Josh, I was it rooting for was. you. was. I was rooting for you. Um, They go on dates. They have a good time. They connect. And then he ghosts her. And then Dustin was like, oh, he did it to get close to her to get her blood. I'm like, no, I hope you're wrong. And at the end of the episode. We find out that's exactly what it was. Uh, but yeah. the big thing that we now have to theorize about is that when after Josh got her blood, he did send emojis to a King Hulk. So who is the King Hulk? It was blood and a little vial and a thumbs up. Like mm -hmm. Mission accomplished. Yeah. So my guess is, is that they are going to be leading up to the leader, that we will get some kind of um, hint that it's the leader. We're going to see a big green head at the end of it. Mm -hmm. But and then we'll get the big reveal in Captain America. Um, <clears throat> New World, World Order. Order. I was like, I knew the title <laughs> of it. It's on the tip of my tongue. So, yeah, there's other speculations as well. You know, we think it's the leader. Potentially, it could also be like this is kind of wild and like very unlikely, but like Titania could could be it just because. And the only reason why I even say her name is her and Josh were at the same wedding, um, and he talked to her to the person in the text via emojis. So I mean, granted, it's faster than typing out you know, whatever, I like guess. just three emojis, it's easier. But I feel like that's emojis in a text is a very Titania thing. Uh, a couple of other people in the comments, not this comment, but of our reaction video said that potentially it could be a mill that's mm. doing this. And then I saw another theory, I think also in our comments that said, what if it's Thunderbolt Ross? Very possible because, I mean, we still also want some way to bring in the Red Hole. Mm. Um, and mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, could mm -hmm. be, I mean, because he would, if he is experimenting on himself to be a Hulk, he would probably consider himself to be King Hulk. So, oh, and we are breaking up a little bit. We do apologize. Oh, sorry. There we uh, go. That's better. There we go. Back to normal. But I'm really curious on what, yeah, who's doing this? Who's behind all of this? But that is one thing that did actually piss me off about this episode. You know, when She-Hulk is at the um, retreat and she sees one of the wrecking crew there and then has this um, heartfelt conversation with the group. I'm sitting here going, why did you jump me? Why did you not ask who him you? who sent you? Someone Why? sent you, right. That is like the first question that would have come out of my mouth. Tell me what you know and why did you do this? And it is completely glanced. I'm over. guessing for Jennifer Walters, she's more, she's maybe not thinking someone was sent. We as the audience know because of we heard the conversation of those guys in the car once they got beat up. True. She wasn't there for that. So she just 
thought that these four guys got some magical tools and they could try to beat up the She-Hulk. Um, so may, maybe her brain isn't there, but we as the audience know that. So we're like, why? Why didn't you ask? Because I wanted to know. I wanted to know. Uh, and I felt like the retreat, again, great journey for Jen as she needed to work past some issues. And it was a great uh, way to show off some of the more obscure, uh, I guess, lesser known Marvel characters. We have Man Bull. We have uh, El Aguila. Uh, Aguila. Sorry, I'm saying that incorrectly. Uh, we have Porcupine. Porcupine and uh, Saracen, who was a vampire. Again, blood. Or he <laughs> thinks he's a vampire. So, and honestly, I think that's hilarious. Um, that the fact that we're able to get just some of these, I mean, whoever would think that we would get like the wrecking crew mm -hmm. or we would get man bowl in, in a live action, anything <laughs> for, uh, for Marvel. I mean, this is the greatest thing ever that we're getting everything to come to life yeah. in Marvel. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm excited to, for them to show us anything. And if I'm not mistaken, someone did mention that some of those characters at the retreat are mutants. Uh, Manbull is a mutant, I think. Uh, or was it Porcupine? It was one. It was one of those two. I did. I did a little bit of uh, reading. Cyber Goblin says Saracen spends a lot of time outside for a vampire. <laughs> He's like Blade. He's a daywalker. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, so I just thought it was cool. Thank you so much to Black Funnel Lala. Thank you. Uh, for sending in a super sticker. It's a cute little. What does it say? It says number one. Oh, thank you. Number cute. one. Cute, cute, cute. So yeah, um, next episode, I imagine, will be longer than the traditional 30 minutes that we've seen so far in this season. Yeah. Because based on the trailers, we still have yet to see Frogman. Yeah, no And Frog obviously Daredevil. Yeah. Well, and this is the thing. They actually have a lot to wrap up here. Because uh, we yes. still have to do El Aguilar. Is that his also... Sorry, that person is the mutant. Oh, he channels okay. bioelectric energy. Thank you, Cyborg Goblin. Okay, okay. And Manbull um, is genetic experiment. Ah, got it. But we still have a lot of things to wrap up here. I mean, in two episodes, mm -hmm. they have to um, hint at why Hulk went back to Sakar. Um, why we also have. Who's trying to get Jen's blood? What Daredevil is up to? Why is he in LA? Why is he in LA? Yeah. So I'm a little curious on how, I mean, they have two episodes to wrap all of that up and, or at least hint at which direction they're going for season two of She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, you think there's going to be a, wait, did they say? Out of all things, She-Hulk does seem like the kind of show that would have a season two really because it's so open-ended it's so mm -hmm. you know it really allows them to throw in a lot of obscure what most people would probably consider like the d level the f level uh characters in the marvel cinematic universe i mean uh, man bowl that is i mean that is obscure so yeah i'm curious i really want to see where those those three story points are going what i worry about with only two episodes left and even if they're at like 40 minutes plus 50 minutes i worry that it's gonna feel super rushed mm -hmm. just to get to the end and then it, and we're gonna feel that it was rushed and then we were unsatisfied i will say seeing the little bit of footage that we saw for an upcoming episode of she hulk uh you can tell where the budget which episodes? <laughs> Which episodes? So. The ones with Daredevil got yeah. the big budget. It looked but, excellent on the big screen. Honestly, I really wish they would have done that in the in this episode, in episode <laughs> seven. You know, trim out some of the comedic moments, some of the um, tongue in cheek moments, and put stuff in there that would have propelled the certain storylines forward a little bit more, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't seem like a mad rush to the finish line at the end of, for the last two episodes. Mm -hmm. um, Steve Chevy says she has a lot of side stories in the comics, so she would be great for seasonal type stories. And she does a lot of team ups. She has teamed up with a lot of different superheroes. Yeah. So yeah, that's why you can have her in, I mean, in pretty much any legal battle now, you know, you can have her show up in a movie, in a TV <laughs> show, 
um, in her own show. You can introduce smaller characters so you can use them again in other shows or other uh, movies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they could really utilize She-Hulk in that capacity. Another thing, and I think maybe that's why The Retreat is my least favorite episode so far. So we have the wedding episode where it took Jennifer out of the courtroom and away yes. from her job, which was... Um, in a way, great because you know you can see her outside of work. Because in the past, Nikki's like it's Friday night and you're working. Like she's so work focused mm -hmm. um, that she kind of forgets to have, like have fun and have a social life. Um, but in the same time, they call it She Hulk Attorney at Law, and I really wanted to see her lawyer a little bit more. Yeah, and I felt like I felt like instead of the retreat, we could have gotten more Jennifer Walters She Hulk in court defending you know, and all that stuff. But. Yeah, to see a really cool uh, yeah. court case that she's able to just <clears throat> knock and show how good of a lawyer she mm -hmm. really is. Yeah, so, but we, you know, we have two more episodes left and we are doing reactions for Andor and She-Hulk, which is the same, uh, you know, two two shows in one week. So you will get Andor early Wednesday morning and She-Hulk early Thursday morning. Uh, so check our channel for those reactions during the week and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you don't miss out on videos because I think YouTube did the thing again where they like weirdly like uncheck the notification bell. I saw that happen to me. Oh, really? For some of the channels I follow, I'm like, how come they haven't updated in forever? So I You're go like, onto they... their channel and there's like six videos. I'm like, okay. It's like, I just don't get notifications anymore. What happened? Yeah. Hey, what happened? Yeah. Uh, Socrates says, me too, on the comments about the lawyer. I wanted that more. I wanted more of that and her defending superheroes. Yes. Yeah. And It'd be funny for her to defend all those characters. Defending superheroes yes. is something that I would love to see. Yes. To where, say, you could also do like the Mr. Um, Mr. Incredible situation to where he tries Ooh. to save people and he does. He saves a whole bunch of people's lives, but a whole bunch of people get injured and some of them sue them. Like and... Wanda Maximoff in uh Yeah. War. So how does that work out? Would she be able to defend them? And we do know that if in one of the comic books that she is the one who goes and kind of does the the trial for the celestials that saves planet earth Ooh, so we could see that's a that missed opportunity mm -hmm. oh to i see mean they haven't done it yet they lawyer the celestials yeah they still could do that they still could do that on but... why humanity is worth saving <laughs> Well, you guys, that, that's about all we have for today's live stream. Thank you so much for joining. We will be back on Wednesday with another live stream. It'll be on, on location. And then Saturday, it'll be a more condensed, less news, more spoiler discussion heavy, just like today, later part of today's uh, live stream. So thank you guys for being here and waiting and being patient with all of our stuff. COVID was no joke, man. Yeah. That really. And we were already kind of like struggling to keep up. And then that just was like, wha bam. Yeah. That was so like COVID, right? And then we recovered, but then it was D23. And then it was a bunch of other stuff like Halloween Horror Nights, which is the video I'm currently working on. So you guys will get that soon. So yeah, just lots of stuff. We're slowly working through it. I really want to watch Cobra Kai. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys, we love you so much. Thanks for being here and we will catch you on our next live stream. We're back.